That's all right. I will, uh, since we've started recording now, I'll just start uh, my my little spiel over here. So Apprenti is a free registered apprenticeship program for jobs in tech, which includes computer programming, cybersecurity, and more. So what you will do if you're accepted into our program is go through a lot of education. That includes classroom training and then on the job training. Uh, so it's a little bit of what you might experience in a uh, associate's degree or bachelor's degree, kind of a university setting, plus this uh, second point here, which is that it's a paid job. So not only is it free for you to participate in our program, but that on the job training lasts for a full year and it is a full time paid job. You're going to earn a competitive wage from day one. And then when you finish the program, uh, you are going to earn a credential and that is uh, portable within a industry. And so what that means is once you finish our program, you're going to have this credential that says you are now a fully qualified software developer or cybersecurity analyst or many different things. If you could go to the next slide, please. Thank you. So what are those many different things? Currently, we offer apprenticeships in a lot of different things here. Um, I'm not going to go into every single different uh, occupation that we do offer, but what I want you to take in, uh, into account here is one, just like with other registered apprenticeship programs that you might be familiar with, we're not just training you generally to be in the world of Czech, we're training you specifically to do a particular occupation. Uh, so just like you wouldn't train to be a construction worker generally, you might train to be a carpenter, you won't train to be an IT uh, employee generally, you might train to be a cybersecurity analyst or a business analyst. And the second point I want to make here is beneath each one of these occupations, you're going to see a lot of different certifications listed. Those are certifications that you will actually gain as a part of this program. So you don't have to come in with any prior experience. You don't have to come in with any prior certifications. You will actually gain these as a part of your experience with us. So where might you work? I mentioned there's that on the job training, that full year of employment. Um, we have so many different local uh, employers who are participating in our program. This is just a few. We actually couldn't fit all of them here on the screen, which is really exciting. Um, what I want to highlight are uh, uh, the, the wide variety of uh, names that we have here. Employ or excuse me, employers like Eversource, Cengage, Wayfair, Liberty Mutual. Uh, nationally, we actually operate in over 13 states now. Uh, we're, we're getting to our 14th one soon, so that's why I said over. Um, and we have lots and lots of hiring partners. What's really cool to me is that they're all over different industries. So yes, you would be working in tech, uh, but you might be working at a company like Wayfair that sells home furnishings. You might be working in a company like, like PTC that does a lot of um, consulting in um, mechanical engineering and different um, uh, manufacturing industries. You might be working at Liberty Mutual. Um, so it's, uh, it's really lovely to have all these hiring partners um, who are really interested in taking on apprentices. If you want to go on one more slide. Super. So um, as I said, it was a short presentation. I want to say thank you. Uh, but I'm sure that many of you are asking the question, is this the right program for me? Well, what I would say to you is go to our website to find out more. I know I gave you just a little taste uh, of what our program is about, but you can learn a lot more at ApprentiCareers.org. Uh, there you can find additional information. We have an FAQ. We have lots of great videos. Um, but uh, I, I am uh, absolutely sure that um, many of you out there are, are interested in the world of tech. So if you are, I encourage you to take a look. And again, happy to answer any questions once we've gotten through everybody's presentation. So thanks for your time. I'm Ethan, and I look forward to hearing from you soon. Thank you so much, Ethan. So just a reminder that at the end of the presentation, we are going to send everybody that uh, registered, we're going to send them all the flyers from all the speakers that are here tonight. So next we have uh, Best Hospitality and we are going to hear from Lori Sylvia. Hi everyone, can you hear me okay? Yeah. Okay, great, great. Well, thanks for having me. My name's Lori and I'm from Best. 
Um, I'm going to tell you today about a new training program that we are offering, uh, which is a healthcare training program. Um, the training program is called Environmental Services Worker Training Program. So you can go to the next slide, please. So would you like to work in a hospital? Uh, we have a training program for hospital housekeeping workers. Graduates of our program apply for housekeeping jobs at hospitals in the Boston area. So the housekeeping department in hospitals is called environmental services. The environmental services workers clean patient rooms and procedural and surgical areas. They ensure a sterile environment for patients and staff to help prevent the spread of disease and infection. So I want to tell you a little bit about our class. It's a four week class. It meets Monday through Friday from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And it's at no cost to you. So right now all classes are held online. So you can take the class from the comfort of your home. And when applicable, eligible students receive a free Chromebook computer from Tech Goes Home to use for class. Our next class starts on April 26th, so it's coming up soon. And beginning on March 1st, which is just a week away, I'm gonna open up the interest form on our website and that's how you apply. So to apply, you go to our website, you submit the interest form, and then we will call you to talk with you about your interest in the program. And after the call on, on the first call, if you're um, still interested, we will set up a second interview with one of our career coaches. The goal of our training program is to get you a great job in hospital housekeeping. And this is just a, a little depiction of some of our partner employers, such as Mass General Hospital, Boston Children's Hospital, Boston Medical Center, Brigham and Women's Hospital, Beth Israel, and Newton Wellesley Hospital. And that's just a few of our partners. So thank you. I did want to tell you that most of the jobs that we place our students in start at at least $15 an hour or more, depending on the shift. And the last class that we had graduate, 100% of our students were placed in hospitals doing environmental services. So thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. Thank you. So our next uh, speaker is Allison Seamers from the CCHERS Clark Consortium. Hello and uh, good evening to everyone. Thank you for coming. So I'm going to briefly tell you about our training programs that are coming up. We are the Heart Consortium and we offer a home health aid training and a CNA training. Um, next slide. So basically we're looking for people who are interested in getting um, entry into the healthcare field, um, either through working as a home health aide, which is working with individuals who are elderly or disabled in their homes, or as a CNA, which is working on a floor in a hospital. And the hospital that we work with is Brigham and Women's Hospital. Um, our training is hybrid online and in person. And I always say as of today, February 18th, that's how it's gonna be. I mean, everything's shifted and changed so much over the past couple months. Um, but online and in person means that there are um, things that we can teach you online, but there are things that you need to be working with a nurse for. Um, the trainings run between three and four weeks. Um, included in our training is a job readiness program through Mothers for Justice and Equality. And it really looks at kind of helping you set your career goals and kind of visioning what you want to be in the future, as well as we do a lot of communication skills, um, because sometimes working um, as a home health aide or CNA and those types of setting are challenging for, for people. So we do a lot of work on communicating. Um, we, it is an employment and training program, which means that we work with these agencies before the training even begins so that you, if you successfully complete our training, then you're automatically hired by the, those institutions. Um, we are planning to start in late March. 
um, things have shifted because schools have shifted and and um, we're still working on some of the clinical sites, but I just got a text that we will probably be definitely starting in late March for both of those programs. Um, the the um, one of the keys to working in the hospital is that people need to be committed to working on the hospital shifts. I mean, shifts uh, at the hospital, as you can imagine, are 24 seven. They're eight hour shifts, they're full time. And that because, you know, people would be um, recently hired that people would need to work every other weekend. Um, unlike working as a home health aide, and I think the person coming right after me will talk a little bit more about being in the home health aid industry, but it is a more flexible schedule. And a lot of our people that we recruit actually like to start as a home health aide, individually working with somebody in their home to help them take care of their activities of daily living, which could be housekeeping, it could be bathing, it could be cleaning, but it's a kind of a one-on-one -on -one, um, situation. And some of our graduates work in the home care industry two hours a week, 10 hours a week, 40 hours a week. It's a little bit more flexible. Um, so, like I said, a lot of our graduates start as home health aides as a way to get their foot in the door in home health care, care. And then they go on to do other things in healthcare. Some go into our CNA program. Some decide that they want to be in some kind of administrative position. Um, so we help them through that career change. A lot of our home health aides get very attached to their clients, and so they end up taking another job, but still keeping their home health aid clients. Um, the application process is a, little, is a little bit crazy and extensive, so I think the best way, if people are interested, is to email me. I have my email, and then Sheila and her team will send you more information um, to let me know. And we start interviewing for both of these positions the first week of March. So if people are interested, they can get in touch with me as soon as possible. So we hope to see you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Allison. Thank you for being here. So our next speaker um, is for Best of Care and it is Kevin Smith. Hi everybody, good evening. Uh, thank you, Allison, for the pump up uh, prior to me speaking and everything uh, that you said is in fact true. And I would encourage anybody who is interested in trainings that Allison can't referenced. hear anything. Okay. Yeah, Ron. Any better? I can't hear. Sorry. I can hear you. Um, my name is Kevin Smith. I am from Best of Care, as I said, and we are a home care agency. Uh, headquartered I don't know in why I Quincy. Hear else but just both of I'm Boston. sorry. Anything? No. I I can hear you fine. Yeah, I can I, hear you as well. I yeah. Can hear you. Okay. I can I can hear you fine, Kevin. Same. All right, then I'm going to press on. I'm sorry about. I don't know why I can't hear him. That's super strange. I could hear everyone else except for him. Okay. All right, well. If uh, you have problems you, uh, hearing him, we're gonna share the information uh, at the end as well. We're gonna email everybody with the info. Um, I can hear him well. You said you were hearing the other speakers, not, not sure. But if you're interested in uh, his organization, you'll definitely get the information in an email right after we finish today. Thank you. Hey, thank you. Shall I continue, Sheila? Yes, please. Okay. Um, again, I'm Kevin Smith. I am the CEO and owner of a company called Best of Care. We're a home care agency, a non-medical home care agency. So we employ homemakers, companions, personal care workers, CNAs, home health aides, uh, LPNs, and RNs as well. Uh, Best of Care is celebrating its 40th year in operation this year. So we have been around since 1981. We serve Boston, Greater Boston, uh, the South Shore, the Cape, and all the way out to Springfield. So we have a statewide footprint. Uh, we, as I mentioned a moment ago, we employ individuals who are looking to work as caregivers. We offer in-house training that is totally free. We can take an individual who comes to work for us that has 
no experience working in home care, has no credentials working in home care, and offer you an opportunity to upskill you up to a home health aid level. And we've had a number of aides over the years who have come in and started doing groceries, shopping, laundry, working as homemakers, and been upskilled and trained to become home health aides. And along the way, seen an increase to their pay, increase to their schedule, their responsibilities, uh, and really furthering their education, many going on to pursue other careers, which is great. Um, we are totally flexible, meaning that we employ people who might work part-time or full-time. A lot of people work, uh, you know, on average 25 hours a week at our company. Some people work 40. Uh, we work 24 seven around the clock. We are always delivering service, no matter the weather, the season, does not matter. We need people and we work as best as we can to accommodate your, availab your availability as well as your geography. We employ up about 400 home care aides as of today, and we care for more than 1,200 clients. Uh, there is a workforce shortage in our industry. So there is really uh, no limit to the amount of work or opportunity that an individual uh, could obtain through employment with a company like mine at Best of Care. Um, <clears throat> We offer competitive pay for our field, starting at $16 per hour. And again, you do not need to have any specific training or experience to come and work for Best of Care. You will see on the flyer that gets passed out at the end of tonight's meeting, all of the information that you need about applying for the job and how to contact our HR department. You can apply online and you can complete all of your education and training online as well. So I hope that people will consider this opportunity as well as all the rest of the great opportunities presented by my colleagues tonight. And thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. Thank you, Kevin. So we have another speaker and uh, it is Chris Campbell and is from Olympia Moving Company. Hi everyone, good evening. Um, yes, we're from, I'm from um, Olympia Moving. We are a um, moving company that uh, performs residential moves, moving people from home to home, um, as well as um, commercial moves, which are usually universities and businesses in and around Boston. Um, we're located in uh, Waltham, Mass. That's our headquarters. Um, uh, and then we have uh, four other locations uh, throughout the country, but we're hiring for um, the local uh, Massachusetts um, area right now. Uh, like Kevin said, we are uh, in need of um, employees and um, our industry is struggling to find employees. Um, what we offer is we offer um, on the job training as well as uh, training at our facilities. And um, we, uh, we also have um, flexible hours and flexible schedules. So if you're um, going to school a couple days a week, we have jobs that can, uh, we can work with your schedule that way. Um, and we, I would ask if uh, this type of job is, is great for um, uh, someone, you know, maybe taking some night classes. Um, like I said, we can, we can work around your schedule. Um, we're looking for, it is a physical job. Um, typically, um, you know, the, the days are eight to 10 hour days. Um, but um, the starting rate is, is 1550. Uh, an hour and you can make, um, you know, tips during the day and um, uh, bonuses also. Um, we, like I said, we do on the job training and there's a lot of room for growth as well. So um, I would just like to say, uh, that's really all I have today. Um, I would just like to say, if you, if you know anybody that's looking for some part-time work, um, we're very flexible. Um, my flyer, the flyer here has my phone number on it and uh, my email address. 
please feel free to contact me at any time and uh, we would love to hear from you. Thanks again. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, so just a reminder, if you have any questions for any of our speakers, put them in the chat or you can, uh, you can ask your questions at the end. Also, we are going to be sending the information from every of, our, uh, of every one of our speakers. Probably by tomorrow morning, we will send uh, their flyers, their info, their websites, uh, links to apply, et cetera. And because we have some uh, people that sign up and requested a Spanish interpretation, we are going to send it in Spanish as well. Okay. So next, we have. Uh, our next three speakers are actually with Boston Housing Authority. So our very first person from BHA is Dori Daliva from the Charlestown Adult Education Center. Hi everyone, I'm Laurie Daliva from Charlestown Adult Education. Uh, we're located right in the Bunker Hill Housing Complex. And we have, um, you'll see the flyer probably tomorrow, but. We have uh, a multi-service center there uh, for anybody looking to get their GED or high set or learn English classes, learn English. Uh, we also have connections to job training. We have an entire career center. So once our students are on their way to their next steps, um, my career advisor, and educational advisor um, can help link them to our many job opportunities and networks uh, that we collaborate with. Um, we, we have been very successful with trade schools, um, really good connections with programs like BFIT and North Bennett Street uh, for next steps. We offer free tax services financial advising, behavioral therapy. Um, and we've been around for a really long time. We just were able to open up nighttime classes. So we are now offering classes for ESOL um, during the day and at night. All of those classes are virtual. Um, so people don't have to come out, we can take people from any of the Boston housing complexes or any area in Boston. Most of our students are from uh, Charlestown, but we can take them from anywhere. Uh, we also now have high set daytime and evening. The evening is all remote. The daytime is hybrid. So anybody that feels like they prefer to learn on site can come in, it's socially distanced and all of that, um, but we also have the option to zoom in uh, both day and night. We had financial advising in all classes, uh, workshops that were provided by our financial advisor and our educational advisor for post-secondary education. And that's about it. Those are all our services. We are, we are currently open right now for free, the Vita site, free taxes for drop off, no contact. Um, and they'll likely have their tax returns back in about a week or two. So we kept it going. It's been a lot of work uh, through this, but we, we're up and running and we have a lot of options for anybody looking to get their high uh, GED or their high set certificate. Thank you. Thank you so much, Lori. So our next speaker is also from the Center for Community Engagement and Civil Rights. He's gonna talk to us about uh, building pathways in section three. So, um, we're going to hear from Azel Martin. Azel, you're on mute. You're okay. There you go. 
Thank okay, you. so I'm Azel Martin, and uh, I work with Building Pathways, which is a pre-apprenticeship program that is funded by the Building Trades Council and the Boston Housing Authority. So Building Pathways, I say, is a pre-apprenticeship program, and we will help and prepare you to enter into a construction trade in the building trade unions. Um, at the end of this meeting, we have a flyer that you can look at and you have to register online in order to attend an information session. And on that information sessions, we'll give you all the information you need to apply for building pathways. So if you enjoy working with your hands and being part of a team, it's a good paying job with excellent benefits. Only four out of 10 college graduates will earn more than a skilled construction worker. And um, we have a lot of women that sign up for the construction trades because they make the same amount of money as men. So a lot of women are signing up. And right now, Massachusetts is leading the country in uh, women in the construction industry through, uh, through the building trades. I also want to say that um, you must be 18 years of age to start. You must have a high school diploma, GED or high set, proficient in English. You must have a driver's license by the time that you have an interview for building pathways. You don't need reliable transportation at this time, but you will need it in the future once you start working. You also have to be drug free. I know a lot of people think marijuana is legal, but it's not legal in the construction industry because it's a safety issue. And also the, we have a lot of federal monies on these construction sites and the feds don't believe that uh, marijuana is legal. So that's one choice. But if you wanna make anywhere between 60 to $100,000 a year, this might be a choice that you can look at. With a high school diploma or a Corey, you can make good money in the industry. We have Boston housing residents and Section 8 residents that are in the uh, construction industry that have gone through building pathways and they're making well over $100,000 a year. So their lives have changed dramatically. So it's uh, something that you can get into that you can support your family, buy a home, send your kids to school. And uh, it's a terrific opportunity for a young person to get involved in. And I will say that if you work 25 years straight in the construction industry through the building trades, you would have a million dollars in your annuity, a million dollars. And that's not counting your retirement money. So this is the only opportunity that uh, I see that a young person can get into and 25, 30 years later, they can have a good piece of money in their annuity and in their retirement. So as um, Shayla said, you see a flyer at the end of this session and we have information sessions coming up next week on the 24th and the 25th. You can pick those days. I usually uh, do the information sessions on uh, Wednesdays at 10 a.m. So they're very informative. There's a lot of information to give. Um, and after this session, I'm willing to uh, answer any questions that I can. I hope that I've given you enough information to attract you to the building and construction trades. And uh, I enjoy hearing from you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Asel. So we are right on time with our schedule. So we have our last speaker who, um, who is a specialist from our human resources department from Boston Housing Authority, uh, Nashma Abdul. And she's gonna talk to us about job opportunities with Boston Housing. Good evening, everyone. Um, thanks for being here. Um, I just thought for tonight, I would just go over briefly how to apply for opportunities with the Boston Housing Authority. 
Um, we do post our jobs on our website. If you were to go to the bostonhousing.org website at the bottom of the screen, there's a section that says job opportunities. Our current positions are posted as they become available. So I think currently right now we may have two slots for security and uh, police officer, but that's likely to change within the next few weeks. I know we have some more jobs coming available um, to be posted pretty soon. Uh, so typically what I tell people, um, if you're interested in applying to the Boston Housing Authority, you can go to our website. And then if you see a position that you're interested in, it you would send your resume to hr at bostonhousing.com, I'm sorry, .org. Uh, my colleague Abdul is the person that will receive your resume. We do ask that if you do apply for a position that is not posted or you see a position uh, that you're possibly interested in and you heard there was a position available that you specify on either your cover letter or the resume what opportunity you're actually looking for. Unfortunately, if we receive a resume that doesn't specify what the job is, we're unable to process it. So we do encourage that you specify. Um, you're more than welcome to give us a call. We are currently closed to the public but you're more than welcome to give us a call. Shayla will share uh, my information at the end of the program. You're more than welcome to give us a call and we can assist you with how to get your resume to us or who the contact person is um, to submit your resume. Additionally, uh, not all of our positions are posted. Our janitor groundskeepers positions we're always accepting applications for. Um, this is a position that always comes available. Um, it is a contract with benefits position. So, this position, when you start, you will come on with full benefits, health insurance, vacation, sick time, all of that will apply to this position. This is one of those positions that you will need to send your resume directly to us. Again, the website is hr at bostonhousing.org. And um, I guess that's pretty much it. You just need to check our website as frequently as you can. Um, like I said, we currently have two slots available right now in security and uh, police officer. But like I said, we do have more opportunities coming up in the next few weeks. Um, I will be posting more jobs pretty soon. And if you have any questions, you're more than welcome to share them with us. Thank you. Thank you very much, Nashma. So these are all the speakers we had for you today. We had eight speakers, uh, five from local organizations and three from within Boston Housing. So right now uh, we're gonna go through the questions. So I see that in the chat, there were a couple of questions in Spanish regarding uh, learning English. So I think that Othaniel was uh, asking for when Lori was uh, speaking. So, uh, Laurie, I don't know if you want to just uh, say real quick about uh, your ESL classes. Sure. So enrollment right now can either be done um, through an online enrollment form or we are, we are seeing people at the site. They can come in and register. Um, if they are local, it's very easy. It's much easier for them to come in. We have Spanish speakers, we have Haitian, Creole, Vietnamese and Chinese speakers at the school. So um, we, we can help them fill out the intake and they can just come in and um, take a small placement test and we can actually place them immediately. Like even that day, we're not taking because of the Zoom aspect of it, we are not putting anybody on a waiting list. So um, they would be eligible for classes immediately after they fill out their intake. If they prefer to uh, do the intake virtually, I can actually, if, if I can, their cell phone number, I can actually, um, text the enrollment, the virtual enrollment form, and then they'll get a phone call with some instructions on how to get into the classes. Thank you, Lori. Uh, I hope, Othaniel, that that answered your question. So again, uh, probably by tomorrow morning, we're gonna be sending an email um, with all the information from the eight speakers from today with their flyers and their websites and emails and how to apply information. So, Othaniel, if you're interested, 
you're going to get that information there. And I think that right now, most of the ESL classes are virtual. Is that, is that correct? All of the ESOL classes are virtual. If, if they are uncomfortable, oh, so this is kind of important too. If they are uncomfortable, I do have one instructor who's on site and can do classes um, face to face. And if they don't have access to a laptop or any kind of um, appropriate technology for classes, they can come into the school and use our computers. If they're, even if their instructor is at home, they can, they can zoom in using our computers. Okay, excellent. Mm -hmm. um, so, Lori, I think Othaniel left uh, the information okay. there. Yep. Oh, okay. So I will actually text him the intake form right now. Okay. Excellent. Thank you so much, Lori. Get my glasses. <laughs> um, I think that those are all the questions I see in the chat. So if anyone has any um, questions. We actually just had another question come in in oh. the chat. Okay. Um, it's from oh. Eric for the apprentice speaker. So for Ethan, um, when does the next program start? Yeah, happy to answer that. And thank you, Eric, for your question. Um, we are anticipating our next uh, apprenticeship program to start in April. Um, we will likely be bringing on some IT business analyst apprentices. Um, but really, uh, we review applications on a rolling basis. And that's because we always work based on um, more or less our employer schedule. Um, we have a lot of employers who want to hire folks in IT. And so once we uh, hear them say we're ready to hire some folks, then we begin our recruitment and interview process. So I would say the sooner the better um, in terms of applying, but our most upcoming will be sometime in April. Does that answer your question, Eric? And again- yes, that does, will... thank you. Um, can okay. you hear me? Yep. I just had a follow-up question. Uh, what, what are the requirements to apply for the program? That's a great question. Happy to answer it. Um, so our program uh, uh, has some very straightforward requirements. Um, in order to be eligible to become an apprentice apprentice, you must have a high school diploma or equivalent. You must be 18 years of age or older. Um, and you must be registered to work in the United States for the duration of the program. Um, if you can meet those requirements, you're eligible to apply. And um, one more important note is that uh, the first step to applying is to go onto our website and take our assessment. Um, it is not a technical assessment. So a lot of people will ask, but well, what if I don't have a tech background? What if I don't have tech skills? Um, that's all right. Our, our assessments are all behavioral. So what we're looking for um, is really, do you have the right um, kind of applicable skills or transferable skills? And are you interested in this role? Um, so those are the main things we're looking for. But again, if you're interested in applying, you have to be 18 or over, you have to have a high school diploma or equivalent, and you have to be registered to work in the US. All right, sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Eric, for your question. And thank you, Ethan, for answering it. Is there, are there any other questions for any of our speakers? You can either unmute yourself, you can use the raise hand feature, or you can put it in the chat. Hi, um, my name is Tina. I, I was just uh, wondering, because um, I didn't register, I just, you know, tapped the link. So how would I be able to get the flyers? Thank you, Tina. Uh, you can put your email in the chat. So if okay. you don't want to put it so everyone see it, you can just click where it says two and you can choose. Uh, there's one that says Boston Housing Authority, which is the host, which is in this case, Danielle. She's doing, uh, she's um, handling the whole Zoom thing. And you okay. can put your email there. So again, you just click the two and click on Boston Housing Authority and it will go directly to Danielle. All right, thank you. Thank you. I just put it in the chat. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tina. Yeah. Hey, I have a question. I'm sorry. Kind of like what she had. So um, what did you suggest that you just put your email in the chat? So I just go to more. Yeah. Just... So if you go to the chat, you can either put your email there. And if you don't want it to go to everyone, you just click on the little arrow 
and just click on Boston Housing Authority and only Danielle will see the email. Danielle is our, um, the AmeriCorps Vista who's helping me organize this event. So if okay. you click on two and just Boston Housing Authority, only Danielle will see your, your email. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Yeah, no, no problem. And everyone else who would like to get this information at the end, uh, please do that. Put your email address in the chat. And is there any other questions? Um, yes, I have a question. Um, if you can provide me the name of the um, one that's doing hospitality so I can put my email in for her. Yes, of course. So uh, it's Miss Lori Sylvia. Uh, she works for Best Hospitality. But if you sign up, you are going to get the information as well. Thank you. Yes, so Geraldine, actually, the training that we're doing right now is for healthcare um, because the Hospitality industry isn't really hiring now at all because of the pandemic. So we're training for healthcare environmental services workers. But you can email me and we can talk more about it. Okay, okay. we'll do so. Thank you. Thank you. So we have another question for Asel. Uh, Vanessa is asking, how can she apply to the program? Through the program, the first thing she, you have to do, Vanessa, is attend an information session. So we have one that's coming up next Wednesday at 10 a.m., but you have to call Building Pathways. But I'll give you the number now, 617-238-5292. And we've been working virtually as well. So leave your name and number and someone will contact you back and give you the information so you can um, zoom in with us on the information session that's virtual. And then you will get all the information you need to apply. So once you uh, attend the information session, um, that's when you re will rep reply back to Building Pathways and they will send you an application to fill out. And as you go through the information session, there's a deadline on the application with your documents. So you'll get all the information you need at the uh, information session. So just call that number so they can give you the links so you can attend the information session. Thanks, Asel. So Suma and I put the uh, phone number also in the chat. And I see a couple of people also put their email. If you put your email in the chat, then you, uh, you will get the information as well. If you sign in to be in this uh, virtual job fair, then you do not need to put your email. We already got it. If you did not, um, if you do not sign up, then yes, please. Um, put it in the in the chat. And uh, if you don't want everyone to see it, you can just choose Boston Housing Authority and we will be the only one seeing it. Uh, we have another question uh, from Vanessa. For Lori at Best Hospitality, Vanessa wants to know how she can apply. Hi, Vanessa. Thanks for your interest. So on March 1st, we're gonna open up the application on our website. So you just go to our uh, website, which is www.besthtc.org. I'll put it in the chat, but it's also going to be on the flyer and on my slide presentation that you're gonna get by email. So March 1st, you can, you can apply. Thanks for your question, Vanessa. And again, if you uh, sign in for this for the job fair, then you will get an email by tomorrow morning with information from all our speakers and their email so you can directly contact them. And also the information will be going out in Spanish as well for our Spanish speaking uh, participants. 
any other questions, please put them in the chat or uh, just unmute yourself and ask the question. So um, everything, everyone who pretty much spoke today, you said um, would be on the flyer, correct? Correct, yes. Okay, and also, um, will you guys be having another virtual fair anytime soon with like other people or just updated um, information with the individuals that spoke today? Thank you for your question. Um, so this is our very first uh, virtual job fair. Um, this is our very first job fair, actually. Mm -hmm. So um, we wanted to see how this one goes and apparently it went really well. We had a good amount of participants and we had a lot of questions. So we are planning on doing more events like this. Uh, if you are interested um, and you leave us your email or so let me ask you a question. Did you sign in to get the information for, um, like, did you sign up to be in this in this uh, job fair? Yes, I did. Okay, perfect. So we have your information now. So when we do our next uh, virtual job fair, then you'll definitely get information. We are actually, if you, you can, we're only uh, providing information on social media. So Please, everybody, you can follow Boston Housing Authority. You can follow us on Twitter. You can follow us on Facebook and on Instagram. We uh, we advertise our events there. You can also, if you are a BHA resident and you subscribe to the Resident Empowerment Coalition um, newsletter, we, uh, we also advertise uh, with them. And if you are a resident of Alice Taylor, Mildred Haley, Frederick Douglas, I'm sorry, Franklin Field, and Ruth Barkley. If you're a resident of those four, um, those four sites, they get an additional newsletter because they are under a self-sufficiency grant. So if you are a resident of those four sites and you gave us your information when we mailed the info form last year and you returned to us, then you get an extra uh, newsletter. So there are many ways that you can uh, follow up what we're doing. We do oh. not want to um, close these opportunities just for the people from those four sites. That's why we uh, put this on, on our social media so all our residents can see it. And um, we also uh, provided information in the sites where we do meal distribution. So, and we also uh, talk to the, the residents that attend the REC meetings every month and also the RAP meetings every month. Um, so thank you so much for, for your question. But yes, to answer the short answer is yes. We're planning on doing more events like this and we hope that you can join us again. Okay, because um, I had first heard of the event by um, a letter I got in the mail. Mm -hmm. So I was just wondering if that was going to be like um, something you guys continue to do, you know, for those that don't like really... Um, interact so much with social media or just don't, don't get a chance to see it um, online? Yes, yes, absolutely. So if you got a letter in the mail, that means you're a resident of all those four sites. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. So did you get a letter last year from us uh, asking you for your information for our database? I don't recall. I just okay. know that I recently received the uh, virtual fair um, you know, uh, memo in the mail. That's why I just asked, because I just wanted to know, just in oh, case no. you know, I oh, overlook no. an email or something. Okay, so now we have your information. So you will be getting, you know, next time that we do uh, a job fair like this virtually, then you will definitely get uh, get our information. I'm just gonna write okay. down your your name. Um, oh, I, I just see that says iPad. Okay. Do you mind if I have your name? You can put it in the chat just to us. If, uh, okay. if you just want to tell, you know, if you just want to tell us. <laughs> um, okay, sure. My name is Francesca. Okay. Thank you, Francesca. So you can leave your email address also. Um, okay. Well, if you sign up, we have your email. Yeah, so. Okay. Because I sent it to Daniel already. But okay. Thank you oh, so much. Perfect. Okay. Then perfect. Thank you so much, Francesca, for coming. And uh, yes, we're, we're planning on doing more events like this. Thank you. And I saw your email, so I have you down already. Thank Perfect. you. And I see that more people is putting their email uh, in the chat. So Danielle, I know that she already got all those, right? <laughs> okay. 
Okay, awesome. So, um, Dean or Diane, uh, can I, well, I don't understand your question. Can you, uh, you can unmute yourself and ask what is your question. Diane, did you did you have a question? Because I see that you you asked, can you record? But I don't you have a question. No. Okay. So, are there any other questions? You can unmute yourself, or you can put it in the chat. Another question going once, going twice. All right, excellent. So thank you so much for everyone that participated tonight. Um, we had a good time hearing from all our eight speakers. Um, like we said, we're gonna share the information by tomorrow morning with everyone that signed up and also with everyone that put their email in the chat. The information will also be in Spanish. And if you have any questions, um, my, our, our information will also be in the email. So if you have any additional questions, you can definitely follow up with us, okay? Uh, again, thank you so much. Have a good evening. Thank you to our participants and thank you so much for our eight wonderful speakers. Thank Thanks, you and good night. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, have a good night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night. Good night. Thanks, Shayla. You did a good job. Oh, thanks, Asel. <laughs> Excellent.